Up until now, we've been working with kind of individual operations. Um, and that's really kind of very straightforward, but doesn't really help us answer useful questions. The mean age of the data set we could have gotten just using the summary function uh, or just the mean function the way we learned in week one in class. And so where things start to get interesting is when you compute summaries uh, or you know use the summarize function or use the mutate function uh, in ways where you're grouping based on certain variables. So imagine I had the question, what is the mean age for men uh, versus women in a data set? And so working in this data set, what I really want to get back is uh, the mean age for women and the mean age for men. Something that looks like this. So notice again that the ID column is gone because um, you know I'm not talking about individuals here. I'm talking about all women and all men in this data set. And similarly, the disease column is gone. The sex column is there because that's my variable that I want to group on. And age has been replaced by mean age, which uh, is something that I chose to name the uh, value for the mean. So if I wanted to generate that data frame at the bottom, what I would do is that I would group by sex, and then I would use the same summarize function I used before. So this basically reads as patients, then group by sex, then summarize mean age equals mean age, uh, in where the age is in parentheses. And notice the columns that show up. The grouping column, which is sex, and the newly defined mean underscore age summary column. In the last example, I chose to calculate the mean age just based on a single variable of sex as a grouping variable. But I might actually want to know, what is the mean age based on both sex and disease? So for example, uh, it doesn't happen to be the case in this data set, but I might have a data set where I have men with hypertension and women with hypertension, and I'd want to know, for each unique combination of disease and sex, what is the mean age? In this case, again, there are two men who have diabetes. Uh, and so really I should get back three rows here. One row is uh, women with depression, uh, men with diabetes, and women with hypertension, uh, such that the uh, men with diabetes has the average age for that 78 year old and that 38 year old. So the way I would do this is very similar to the last example, except instead of grouping by just sex, I could group by disease and sex and calculate that same summary. And I get back the mean age for every unique combination of disease and sex. Let's take a look at the ordering of the columns. So the original data set was ID, sex, disease, and age as the columns. And this new one has disease, sex, and then mean age. So you notice that sex and disease are actually reversed in their column order. The reason this happened is because I chose to group by disease and then sex, and the grouping columns always show up first in the order that you specified. And when you use the summarize function, the remaining columns show up in the order that you specify in the summarize function. So in this case, it was disease, sex, then summer, uh, and then mean age. If I wanted sex to show up first, I could have just as easily reversed the order such that it says group by sex, comma, disease, and then sex would have showed up as the uh, first variable in the data frame. Let's take a look at the ordering of the rows. So you'll notice that hypertension showed up first in the original data frame, but it shows up last in the uh, summarized data frame. The reason that this happens is, is that for each grouped variable, typically the values are sorted in alphabetical order. So when the summary was computed, the, disease, the uh, R first sorted the values of disease in alphabetical order from depression down to hypertension. And then within each category, it sorts by uh, sex. And like I said, in, in this case, there were no disease for which we had women and men, but if there were, female would have showed up before male 
because f comes before m. Another thing I might want to know is how many people have each of the diseases? And so given this original data frame, I'd want to know that there are, there's one person with depression, two people with diabetes, and one person with hypertension. What function would I use to get there? If you're thinking that you'd want to use the mutate function, mutate wouldn't work here because the number of uh, rows that I got back in this function had nothing to do with the number of people in the original data frame because I had four rows in my original data frame and I only have three rows in this column, or rather in this data frame. So mutate's probably not the function to use. Instead, what I really want is a summary. Uh, uh, or a summarized function. So it's not mean or median. What summary function can I use to calculate counts? This is also a helper function that we used earlier. And if you go back to the slide where we were comparing mutate versus summarize, it's one of the specific summary functions that I highlighted. And it's the function n with, with a parentheses before uh, uh, op open and close parentheses next to it. So if you said patients, then group by disease, and then summarize based on the number, where the number is the number of rows, what actually happens here is that after grouping by disease, it counts the number of rows in each group, and it assigns that a column name of number, such that when you run this function uh, or this pipe set of functions on this data frame, you get back uh, a count with two uh, variables in it disease because that's what you grouped by, and number, which is the column that you defined in the summarize function. Finally, the last thing we'll cover in this lecture is examples of how to resort a data frame. So let's say I wanted to calculate the mean age for people with any given disease sorted from youngest to oldest, so such that I get something that looks kind of like this. So I've still got the same diseases that I had before, um, and I've got the same mean ages, except that the mean ages have been sorted from youngest to oldest. So let's think through how we would do this. We first would want to start with patients and then group by disease and then calculate the mean age the same way we did before uh, using the summarize function. And then at the very end, we would insert this new uh, function arrange with the value mean age, which tells uh, dplyr to basically resort the entire data frame with mean age from lowest to highest. And the default value or the default order that you're, when you sort uh, using the arrange function is always lowest to highest. If you wanted to reverse the order and sort from highest age to lowest age, then you would run the same exact set of pipe functions, except instead of arranging by mean age, you would add this helper function DESC, uh, which stands for descending order, which just tells a range that you actually want the age sorted from highest to lowest instead of lowest to highest. The usual use case when you calculate a mean or any kind of summary statistic is to get rid of the original rows of the data and look at just the summary statistics like the mean or median. However, occasionally, you want to keep the original data frame and actually add on those summary statistics as additional columns based on certain groups. And so an example in this data set might be that we might want to keep the original age uh, present in the data set and add a column called mean age, which has the mean age based on the disease type that the person has, such that you know if you're looking at patient number two, you know that they're older, older than the average patient with diabetes because they're 78. Uh, whereas in uh, row one or row four, since we only have one person in the data set with that condition, their age actually matches exactly the mean age. The way we would do that is by starting with patients, grouping by disease, and instead of using summarize, which would eliminate all the other columns, and only return a group summary based on uh, each disease, we use the mutate function. And what the mutate function or the grouped mutate does here 
is it adds a column uh, with the summary statistics in it, but the output is the same number of rows as the original data frame, such that you can tell basically for each individual, are they older or younger than the average patient with the condition that they have? And so you can imagine times that you might want to do this instead of throwing out your data, um, with the, which is what the summarize function uh, effectively does. Anytime you run a group by function uh, followed by a summarize, your grouping is automatically removed. Uh, this makes a lot of sense because if you're gonna group by disease, let's say, and then summarize, each row effectively represents a single disease. So there's no reason to keep the grouping in place. So dplyr knows to automatically ungroup the data again. However, if you want to manually ungroup the data because you grouped it by mistake or because you did a grouped mutate and now you want to uh, ungroup, there is a function called ungroup which gets rid of the grouping. So if you were to do patients then group by disease then slice one, you actually would get back um, a data frame with three rows, basically the first row with uh, the hypertensive patient, the second row, which is the first diabetes patient, and the fourth row, which is the first patient with depression. However, if you insert that ungroup function in the middle, right after you grouped by disease, then you just get back only the first person, the whole data set, because that slice is working um, on the whole data frame as, a, as opposed to working within each group. So just to refresh, I know that was a lot of content in a very short time frame. Uh, you'll start to learn these verbs uh, by practice and lab uh, and you know through subsequent lectures we'll, where we'll be going over these uh, verbs again and again. But we covered select, which is the function we use to select columns filter and slice, which is the functions we use to select rows, either based on criteria or based on the row numbers. We talked about mutate, uh, which helps us recode variables or define new ones. Summarize, which is used to summarize several rows worth of data down to a single row, uh, like for a median, mean or a median. And then the grouping function in concert with mutate and summarize is where things get really interesting where we can compute grouped means uh, and either add them to the data set using mutate or just look at them um, at an aggregate level using the summarize function. And then finally, at the very end, we talked about arrange, which helps us organize the data in the way that we wanna present it uh, based on the way we think it'll be most readable. Again, we'll revisit joins uh, in week three where we'll talk about how to combine different data frames uh, when they have certain variables in common. I'll end by sharing a couple of tips uh, about how to use dplyr. So remember that grouping can change the order of the data. So I tend to use the arrange function at the very end of my pipe to set the order based on the way I want it. Occasionally, I want it alphabetical based on a specific uh, variable other times, I really want to highlight the range of numbers, and so I want to sort either from highest to lowest or lowest to highest for a specific number to illustrate kind of the spread of numbers, uh, whether that's, you know, mean age or whether that's uh, counts from, you know, highest count to lowest count. Grouping can be reversed by ungrouping, and you almost never have to do it, but occasionally when you do something like a group by command followed by a mutate, um, you might forget that your data is still grouped and any future commands assume that your data is still grouped. So you have to manually ungroup it. Summarize returns only one row or one row per group if the data is grouped. Mutate always returns the same number of rows as the original data frame. Remember that grouping affects all helper functions. So if your data is grouped, and you use uh, a slice function, then that slice function works separately on each group, not at the level of the entire data frame. Remember that group by can take multiple arguments. And so you don't have to specify just one column, you can specify multiple columns 
And the example we gave was up to two, but this could, be, this could be as many columns as you want. And finally, a range can also take multiple arguments. And we only showed an example where you sorted based on a single variable, but the example here, arrange sex comma descending age, is basically would arrange sex in alpha, uh, alphabetical order, followed by uh, age in descending order.